On today's Locked On Royals podcast, brought to you by BetOnline.net, we're going to dive into the Kansas City Royals splitting the doubleheader today with the Baltimore Orioles and playing them again tomorrow for the series win at 11 a.m., bright and early. But what went right and what went wrong for the Royals as they get back in on track after three straight off days? Find out on today's show. You are Locked On Royals. Your daily Kansas City Royals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Lockdown Royals podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I'm your host, Rylan Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Lockdown Royals uh, and also email the show, Lockdown Royals at gmail.com. On today's show, brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this year with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts, folks. We're going to dive into the Kansas City Royals and Baltimore Orioles contest this was a very very weird series and we've had to say that a lot this season right this has been a weird season you had the lockout which didn't ultimately impact the season that much outside of the shortened spring training which is a big deal for pitchers you had the shortened spring training but you'd only delayed the you know the season a week so you still are going to play 162 games and and kind of pick up the schedule it was going to be left off anyway but this schedule for the Royals has just ended up being weird due to weather and just due to the nature of the beast that was the cancellations of the first week. So go, going back to opening day, they played opening day, had the off day for weather like normal. That, that happens every single year, no big deal. And then they play Cleveland uh, for four games and then go to St. Louis, but only play one and they have a random off day on Wednesday that they weren't supposed to have due to weather. Okay, then they play three out of four games against Detroit, but that Sunday, it gets rained out, so they have two straight off days, Sunday and Monday. And then they play uh, six games in a row, which was good to get back on track, but then a scheduled off day again. Then they play all three against Chicago, all three against uh, New York, and then they had weather issues against against St. Louis this week you know, because of the inclement weather, did not cancel any games, but did alter start times, which does change your plan or routine as a player. If you're planning to do something on Tuesday because it's a later game, playing to do something in the morning, you know, you can't do that anymore. It kind of just throws off what you plan for. Then the big one. After playing the three games against St. Louis, although you got them in, you did have to alter your schedule around. You have the scheduled off day Thursday. Go to Baltimore, no game Friday. No game on Saturday. And now you're having to play Baltimore on Monday before going to Texas and then going to Colorado. And you've set up a scenario where you play two games Sunday, one game Monday, which is today, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday before your next off day. So this is going to be a marathon game to make up for all those days off before. And so this is either going to fatigue the team and ruin their pitching staff, or... It's going to let them get into more of a rhythm. But as baseball is an everyday sport, baseball is all about routine. You know, baseball is one of those sports where, you know, you have to get into a rhythm and it's good to play every single day. And sometimes off days can hurt that. So we'll see which path the schedule takes and which one, uh, you know, which path the Royals will choose. Of course, tomorrow in Baltimore, not sure what the weather's supposed to be, but it should be good to go. And then you go to Texas, which plays in a dome, so you'll be fine there. You know, retractable roof in Texas, so no weather issues there for three straight games. Then Colorado, which I guess should be good, right? Should be good at this time of year, but you never know. And then back home for Chicago and Minnesota for a Monday through Sunday stint, and then out to Arizona, who's out- outdoors. So we're likely past the weather delays, at least for now, but you never know in, in this day and age, so we'll see. But that's the weird scheduling quirk that this weekend proposed to Kansas City. And of course, given those rainouts, it results in doubleheaders. So the Royals do play doubleheader with Baltimore today, back to nine innings like they used to be before the uh, pandemic seasons. 
And the Royals trot out a lineup that has Edward Lavieres playing right, and he got pinch hit for in the ninth, of course, uh, and of course, defensive replacement too for Michael A. Taylor. Uh, and then you have Ben Attendi, and you have Salvador Perez, Ryan O'Hearn, Hunter Dozier, Whit Merrifield, Bobby Witt Jr., Kyle Isbell, and Nicky Lopez. In that lineup, of course, Taylor was actually a pinch runner, but then did hit in the ninth uh, to get the go-ahead hit. So the lineup, interesting after the after the three straight off days to go with Olivieris, who uh, I really like a lot, but didn't seem like Matheny loved him a ton. Uh, you put Isbell in center, then moved him to right once you got Michael A. Taylor in the game. I love finding Isbell opportunities, so I do not begrudge the Royals for doing that one bit. But again, even though Michael A. Taylor is Mike Matheny's guy, you have Olivieris, who's batting 371, and Michael A. Taylor batting 278, while Michael A. Taylor bats 231. So not a big deal there. In fact, it should help your lineup, if anything. Of course, Salvador Perez got the catch game one because you've had three straight days off and you got the catch game one and then game two, DH. I don't love Ryan O'Hearn, you know, just being in the lineup in general, but uh, as a DH spot, whatever. The lineup was fine. You start Zach Greinke, who's been, you know, one of your best pitchers, if not your very best pitcher this year. Uh, between him and Brad Keller, I lean Brad Keller myself, but you know, they, Zach Greinke's been pretty good. And Zach Greinke had a very weird outing let's just say he goes five and two thirds gives up 10 hits yes 10 hits walks three more batters so up to 13 base runners through five and two thirds innings but only gives up two runs and in this day and age you'll take two runs given up and here's the problem though the bullpen, which went on that 18 inning plus streak of scoreless innings, came crashing back down to reality whenever Snyder goes in for an inning and a third and gives up two hits of his own off of three hits and a walk batter. But then you had Taylor Clark come in, pitch a perfect inning, got the win, and Scott Barlow comes in and gets the save, even though Scott Barlow got into a little bit of a sticky situation, giving up the two hits, uh, but he did get the strikeout. He did close the door on this win and get the save as Clark gets credited with the win. All in all, that Baltimore lineup produced 15 hits and four runs. They did have three errors, one uh, brutal pickoff attempt with two outs in the ninth. I, I don't get it. These kind of mistakes are what makes Baltimore a bad team. It's what makes every bad team a bad team. I mean, the Royals have plenty of mistakes that you can point to that makes them a bad team. Two outs in the ninth, and you try to pick off, and it sails all the way into foul territory. You go first to third. And then a base hit by Michael A. Taylor beats you. That's just tough, because that base hit would be harmless if the runner was still on first. But instead, you go first to third, and it beats you. And, of course, several Perez then got an insurance RBI to put the Royals up 6-4 in the ninth, and Scott Barlow shut the door. But if you do not pick off there and you don't put yourself in that position, who's to say that you don't just shut the door in the ninth and win the game yourself? Who knows? You'll at least extend the game in your favor. For Baltimore, they got a really bad outing from Jordan Lyles, which is to be expected. He ate seven innings, but, you know, it was not a good seven innings. Gave it four, uh, four runs, although only two charged to Jordan Lyles. He didn't really start laboring until about the, about the sixth inning, I believe it was, whenever Lyles first got into some trouble. And then the Royals' good friend, Jorge Lopez, enters the chat, and he, yeah, he was Jorge Lopez, all right. Two hits, two runs allowed. Uh, and then a walk as well. Of course, the two uh, hits and the t were uh, on his dime, but the two runs were not earned runs because of defensive mistakes. Hey, you know what? The Royals watched Jorge Lopez a lot uh, in his career in Kansas City, and he, there were some murmurs that he had figured it out in Baltimore. I was not that impressed with him watching him today, but maybe he has figured things out in Baltimore. You can go check out Lockdown Orioles for that information and see how they're dealing with this series. And ultimately, the Royals get one less hit than Baltimore, but two more runs, and that's what matters, of course, thanks to 
the defensive miscues of the Baltimore Orioles. Now, granted, with where the Royals thought they were at in their rebuild and where Baltimore is currently at in their rebuild, you shouldn't need defensive miscues to beat the Orioles. But you you take wins and don't apologize for wins because at the end of the day, all that counts in the stat sheet is the win column. And, and you know, all that counts in the win column are wins. They don't really qualify them with if you should or should not have had them. But coming up, we'll talk game two and talk where the Royals sit right now. But first, I want to say right now, better good friends over at Bet Online, folks. Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports sites and sports betting needs, folks. Bet Online has stats, info, betting lines from the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NBA playoffs, MLB festivities, and games every single day including future bets on things like awards and everything else. And this weekend, you could have even bet on the Kentucky Derby, just showing you their wide, wide range of bets you can place at Bet Online. It's your continued source for all sports wagering information from live betting, playoffs, esports, and more. Go today to their website or even use your mobile device and check out their trends and actions. Bet Online is where the game starts. And folks, this is how easy it is. You go type in betonline.ag, you go down to sports, and then you go to baseball. And let's see, the Royals at 11 a.m. tomorrow with Carlos Hernandez on the mound are one and a half run underdogs. The over under is seven and a half runs scored between the two clubs. And the money line has Kansas City plus 120. You know what? Let's take the Royals. Under seven and a half runs for the for the game between the two opponents, and uh, let's see how that goes for us. But there's also a ton of bets you can make, including the M NBA playoffs. So if you're into that, you can bet on those games as well and check that out for tomorrow. Celtics Bucks is a pick 'em. Grizzlies Golden State. Golden State ten point favorites at home. Go we'll check out uh, that line as well if you need to. As it looks as though John Morant is not playing in that game, and for the future you have Tuesday's Philadelphia. Miami game, Philadelphia, three-point underdogs on the road. Dallas, six-point dogs on the road as well as those two series getting on up at two. So a lot to do over there at Bet Online. A lot to do over there at Bet Online right now. Go check them out today. Bet Online, where the sports starts. We are back on the Locked On Royals podcast. On the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Royals your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Royals baseball. For your second listen, go check out the Lockdown Now podcast. The Lockdown Now podcast is a recap of every MLB game with breakdowns from our local experts, taking fans through the season like never before, free and available wherever you get your podcast from. Make sure you check them out today at Lockdown Now. On the Lockdown MLB YouTube channel or the Lockdown Now podcast feed. And of course, for the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day, we have you covered Monday through Friday for all your favorite teams, including Lockdown Chiefs. We'll talk more about that later on. But the Royals and Orioles did play two yesterday, and it was Baltimore who won game two. They win four to two. Baltimore out hits Kansas City eight to seven, and they strike for three in the first off Daniel Lynch get one in the fifth, and that was all they needed to beat Kansas City. Now, Daniel Lynch gave up three runs, uh, of course, two earned, four strikeouts, uh, if I should say five strikeouts, and four walks in this one and four hits. Only pitched three and two-thirds innings. Got a lot of whiffs, but it's just a young guy figuring things out. It's just a young guy trying to find his way in the majors. He did some good things. Again, the whiffs were awesome in this game, but did need, to, need time to settle into the game which you're not, you know, you're not going to have in the majors. You're not going to be able to give up five runs in the first and get away with that, especially with your lackluster offense. And then the bullpen comes in and gives up an additional run before Coleman shuts it down uh, for his one inning, and uh, Gabe Spire gives up one hit across two innings and one strikeout of clean baseball. Look, the bottom line is, in the modern day of baseball, Four runs should not be enough to beat you, especially when you're pitching a young guy like Daniel Lynch, who, you know, of course, needs some insurance. You'll know, need some backing, so to say, on, on the bump. The Royals do mess with the lineup here and go Bobby Witt Jr. playing shortstop and leading off. Uh, personally, 
you know, I love to see him at shortstop. Uh, I, I think that that can really be a home for him, obviously. And, and I think that at this point, you just no longer can count on Alberto Mondesi for, for better or worse. Uh, it's just due to the injuries, due to the lack of production. And look, the, the, the sad reality is for Mondesi and for the Royals, it's just time for a breakup, right? And, and if he goes on and flourishes in another place, which he's given no indication he can, if he goes on and flourishes in another place, that's just the way it has to be. That's just the way sports go because he's never going to do that here. He's never going to turn into the superstar all-star that people think he can be here. It's just not going to happen. And sometimes you have guys like that where they need to change the scenery to you know, fulfill their potential. And even if they do fill that potential, it's not an indictment on the Royals organization. It's just the way life goes. It's just the way things go. Because he, he's never going to get right here. It's clear. They've given him chance after chance, opportunity after opportunity, and either his lack of production or lack of ability to stay healthy ends it. So I don't mind putting Bobby Witt Jr. in leadoff or uh, shortstop. Strikes out one time, goes over four in this game. But attendee goes over four with a couple strikeouts. Uh, just not a great day in game two for him. Now, Salvador Perez is starting to heat up a bit. Don't want to overreact to two games, especially a doubleheader on Sunday where he could have just been feeling really good today. But he does go for two hits on four plate appearances and one run scored in this one. Uh, of course, you had Melendez's double, which was awesome. Salvador Perez had a double as well. Hunter Dozier hit a triple. That was fun. Two hit games is Perez, as we mentioned before, and Hunter Dozier hit a triple and a run scored. Both those two guys had a run scored in this one. Hunter Dozier also had an RBI, so that was great to see. Merrifield has sack fly, but otherwise goes 0 for 3. Uh, still a terrible season for him. Uh, you had Rivera playing third with two hits. That was awesome. I mean, you cannot help but switch up the lineup here and get Carlos Santana all the way out of here, especially even after his IL stint. Again, Benjamin Lindez, one for three. You'll take that from your youngster with a strikeout. Uh, he's batting a cool 333 right now at the major league level. Michael A. Taylor, over three after being the hero uh, in uh, uh, in game one. And then Kyle is below for three as well. Look, it's incredibly hard to sweep anybody in the major leagues. Like, you, you're not going to get many sweeps, but you have to, have to, have to win the series. We're going to preview that coming up, but first, I want to say right now, our good friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar is a fantastic protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Go to builtbar.com, use the promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your next order. Builtbar.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off your next order. Built Bar is a fantastic protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Go to builtbar.com, use the promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your next order. Built.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off your next order. 130 calories, Four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Go to built.com, promo code lock 15, 15% off your next order. Built.com, promo code lock 15, 15% off of your next order. My favorite thing about the bar is that they are healthy and they're good for you. And you do not sacrifice health with repetition. A lot of times, healthy foods are the same repetitive flavor over and over again. Not the case at Built Bar. Built Bar has enough flavors to keep you going and to keep you being able to mix things up on the docket and able to help you thrive in your health journey. So check them out today, built.com, promo code LOCK15. My personal favorite flavor is cookies and cream. You're going to want to try them out today, built.com, promo code LOCK15. We are back on the Lockdown Royals podcast on Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Check out Lockdown MLB. For your national perspective on the major leagues past and present, wherever you get your podcasts from. Also, check out Locked On Chiefs as they're going to take you through the Chiefs offseason with training camp just around the corner, believe it or not. The schedule release is on Thursday, I believe, in the NFL. So they're going to be previewing the schedule and getting you the dates you need to know for when you want to make your trip out to Arrowhead or if you like to travel around the NFL landscape, what road trips will be the most appealing for you and how the schedule benefits and hurts the Chiefs, all you need to know about the schedule coming out this week. So go check them out today. Locked on Chiefs on the YouTube page or in the podcast feeds, just like our show, Locked on Royals. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Royals. And let's wrap it up here with the disclaimer I give all the time. I know it sounds silly. I know that on paper, you look at Baltimore and you see that they're 11 and 17. 
which is more wins than Kansas City has and one less loss. But you look at Baltimore on paper, and they're at this stage in their rebuild where you feel superior to Baltimore, even though the Royals haven't really proven anything of the sort. And you think, oh, the Royals should just sweep Baltimore. So anything short of a sweep, you just get up in arms about. That's not the case, folks. It is incredibly hard to sweep baseball games and baseball series. Even if you took the Royals and made them go play, you know, Vanderbilt, it'd be incredibly hard to sweep. Oklahoma State, whoever is, whoever is a good baseball program, the Tennessee uh, this year. It's hard to sweep. It's baseball. The ball bounce is weird. It's a random sport, yada, yada, yada. But what you can control and what you should be able to expect is series wins. And the Royals have, have bellyached and bellyached over and over again about how this is their year and they feel like they're close to being competitive and they feel like you know they're going to make the playoffs either this year or next year. It's like I told you this offseason and last offseason. You cannot say you're close to the playoffs if you finish 17 games out of the playoffs. So for them to continue to sell you that bill of goods this offseason, which they desperately want to do to make you try to buy back in and buy tickets and go to games, which not many people are doing, you know, as they try to say that narrative, they have to win games in doing so. And you're coming off a huge losing stretch. You have to win the series against Baltimore. You have to win the series against Texas. You have to win the series against Colorado. Because after that, things get dicey. You play Chicago, who's supposed to heat up, and they're supposed to win the division, and they're a tough out. You play Minnesota, who's on a bit of a roll. Arizona for a two-game set. The two-game set's weird. Can't really count that as a series win or loss, no matter what happens. Then you're back on the road against Minnesota. Then you're against Cleveland, who have shown that they can beat you. Then you have the Astros and uh, Blue Jays and back at Baltimore. Look at that upcoming schedule, folks. Past Baltimore and Colorado this week, which series do you emphatically think that the Royals will win on paper? The White Sox? The Twins? The Twins again? The Guardians? The Astros? The Blue Jays? The Blue Jays are going to sweep the Royals. That takes you into June, folks. Into June. So in order to cushion that fall, you have to win series against Baltimore and against Texas, and against these teams. If you are supposedly this improved roster, which you know that is a whole different conversation, but to continue to buy into that fact, you have to believe that they're better and that they can beat Baltimore in a series. So 11 a.m. start, day game after a night game, after two doubleheaders, yada, 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 whatever the body clock, whatever the crap that they sell you in baseball is, an excuse making that they make for bad baseball, don't care. You have to sweep and that's sweet. You have to win the series against Baltimore. You have to. And by the way, another area in which there are sorry excuse for a baseball program is that Chris Owings, who if you're a Royals fan, you remember Chris Owings for being a god-awful baseball player in Kansas City. He's batting 105 this year. 105 this year. He drew a walk against Kansas City three times today in one game. Three times in one game. For a guy batting 105, that's your sorry excuse for a pitching staff, for a pitching coach, and for a coaching staff to get their players prepared in a day and age in which we have more information available than ever before for how to game plan, how to scout, how to pitch to guys, how to operate it with, with other players, and you choose to dance around Chris Owings and walk him three times. That's embarrassing. That is a that is an embarrassing feat to have happen. To just straight up walk him. I, and even Rex Hudler, who's the biggest sunshine pumper you're ever going to meet and thinks the Royals organization is first class, even though they have two winning seasons in my lifetime, first class, even he was saying, dude, it's Chris Owings. Throw it down the middle. Who cares? If he gets hit off you, he gets hit off you. He's not going to. He bets 105. Those are the difference makers. Just as that pickoff attempt for Baltimore was a difference maker in this game, that's a difference maker in the organization in the class of your organization, if you're walking Chris Owing three times in a single game, who's batting 105. So come back tomorrow to see if they win the series, and we'll talk about it on the Lockdown Rolls podcast, anywhere you get your podcast from. Until then, be good and be good to one another.